For your school-based assessment, you will be required to demonstrate the correct techniques in performing a number of chemical operations. Using a spatula, place the solid in a clean, dry test tube or pour the liquid into the test tube. Never heat in a stoppered test tube and be sure that open test tubes are pointed away from you and others while being heated. Always heat the test tube at a 45 to 60 degree angle with the test tube holder positioned about halfway up the length of the test tube. Heat the solid or liquid gently at first and then increasingly more intense until no further change is observed. For gentle heating, pass the test tube slowly back and forth through the flame and for strong heating, place the test tube in the hottest part of the flame which is just above the deep blue section of unburnt gases. For liquids, add anti-bumping granules or boiling chips before heating and ensure test tube is not more than one-third full. Liquids often boil in an uneven fashion, resulting in the formation of pockets of superheated liquid. Superheating refers to the heating of a liquid to where its temperature rises above its boiling point without the formation of bubbles of gas associated with boiling. This can be dangerous because when bubbles finally do form, they usually erupt violently, releasing the hot gases that push the column of liquid suddenly out of the test tube. This is called bumping and is easily prevented by adding a few anti-bumping granules or boiling chips to the liquid, which provide a rough surface upon which bubbles can form. Boiling chips are small, insoluble stones made of calcium carbonate, silicon carbide, or crushed coal, just to name a few. These stones have pores inside or sharp points outside which provide a place for bubbles to easily form. Ensure test tube holder does not come in contact with flame and never cool test tube under a tap. After heating, carefully place the test tube in a test tube rack to cool. The rule of thumb is to add reagents dropwise until in excess unless specifically instructed otherwise. Do not pour reagents back into bottles once they are dispensed and place the stoppers of the bottles upside down on the counter and replace immediately after use. Return reagent bottles to designated position on the table or shelf immediately after use. Unless otherwise instructed, amounts are estimated and in the absence of suggested amounts, Small quantities are always used. Reagents are always to be used judiciously. Do not use reagents that are unlabeled. Place the Erlenmeyer flask, also known as conical flask, on a flat surface and insert filter funnel into the mouth of the conical flask. Flute the filter paper and insert into the filter funnel. The filter paper is a white, porous paper that allows liquid to pass through and retains solids. These folds allow less of the paper to be in contact with the surface of the filter funnel, so the liquid drains through more quickly. In addition, fluting increases the amount of surface area available to the liquid compared with other methods of folding. The funnel should be elevated and clamped into position to allow air to displace readily from the flask and allow the filtrate to proceed quickly. Pour the mixture to be filtered slowly down a glass rod into the filter funnel, ensuring that the level of the suspension does not rise above the level of the paper. When most or all of the liquid flows through the filter paper, then more of the mixture to be filtered may be added until the process is complete. The solid that is left on the filter paper in the filter funnel is called the residue and the liquid that passes through the filter paper and collects in the flask is called the filtrate.